Okay, so I've played about four hours of Metro Exodus at this point. I played nearly an hour or so at Gamescom when I was there. And then I just yesterday played three hours at Microsoft's headquarters in Sydney. Now, this is not a sponsored video. I went to the office in Sydney in my own car with my own gas money. They did give me a muffin and a orange juice, which was really nice of them, but this is not sponsored. I just played it. I'm going to tell you exactly what I think about it. The way it usually works with these preview events is they invite you for like three or four hours. And then after a while, you kind of want to leave after about maybe an hour, an hour and a bit. You sort of like seen what you want to see and you're done. You're ready to go. What happened here was that I was playing and then all of a sudden someone tapped me on the shoulder and they're like, Hey dude, it's time to go. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? It can't be. It's only been like, holy shit. It was three hours, like three hours in this game just whizzed by in what felt like 30 minutes because it's it was just such a great, great immersive experience. I think we should sort of take it back to the very beginning. Metro is a game that I think is not talked about often enough. You know, we always talk about like Half-Life and Bioshock and all that sort of, but among that list of shooters, Metro, it definitely deserves to be mentioned in the same sentence. It's not because there's some definite challenges with the gameplay historically in the previous games. I've played through both of them recently and I absolutely love them, but they do have a few challenges as well that I think stop them from being like that kind of top tier, oh my god, this is an absolute masterpiece kind of video game. However, what they nail is immersion and atmosphere. Like it, it, it's just... It's some of the best I've ever experienced and it's been a long time since we've seen single player, linear, first person shooters that really focus on that narrative and that immersive aspect. Um, Metro Exodus is the third game in the Metro series uh, and from what I've seen so far they are absolutely nailing every part of it and I'm real almost every part of it and I'm really loving it. So let me just take you through the major components. Uh, the footage that you're seeing here is taken from the new outdoor area in the game. This has never been seen before. It's the first time this footage is being made available. Uh, it's you know basically it's quite far into the game at this point. The, the overall premise of Metro Exodus is that you've left the tunnels of Moscow's Metro and you're now now, you know, on an exodus through the countryside, so to speak, on a giant locomotive train. And you're making stops along the way when you need to, either because you are being stopped or because you need supplies or whatever else. This here is a location that we've stopped at and we're exploring it. Um, it's a desert location. We've seen winter locations elsewhere. We've seen an autumn location. There are four major zones, I believe, one for each season, um, but there's also going to be some smaller areas as well. Now, these areas are pretty massive, like it really would take you a good sort of, I don't know, maybe five to seven minutes to walk from one end of this map to the other. Uh, and this is just one of those areas. The first thing to say is that the game looks absolutely incredible. It is the best looking game I've played on a console. And yes, I'm talking about God of War and I'm talking about Red Dead and Detroit Become Human and all those incredible looking games. I really believe that this tops it. Like it just the level of visual fidelity is utterly incredible and the attention to detail within each component is astounding. You know, I played on Xbox One X, uh, 4K obviously. It was running at 30 FPS. I don't know if there's gonna be a performance mode that offers 60 FPS, but I very much doubt it because if you look at the draw distances that you're seeing in this game, I'd be really stunned if they could get this thing running on a console at 60 FPS. But as I said, I don't know, don't quote me on that. It's just my guess that we will only see 30 FPS on consoles. It will of course also see a release on PC where, you know, FPS sky's the limit. But the beauty of this game isn't just in its like textures and draw distances and whatever. There's a real attention to detail in terms of the art and the design that comes through in this. Just the way that each structure is designed, every tiny detail on the weapons, every detail on an enemy unit or, you know, you know, a friendly NPC or whatever, you know, like it's just, it's such a visual feast. I know that's a bit of a cliched phrase, but it really is just this like visual feast. And I, every location that I went to, I was just like jaw on the floor, stunned about how brilliantly just, this game is beautiful. This game is stunning. Gameplay wise, Metro is not a run and gun shooter. It's very slow. It's very methodical. You know, you're very low on ammo all the time. It's about exploring your environment to sort of scavenge what you can. Um, your weapons are really rickety and they get sort of worn out and you need to clean them, etc. cetera. Uh, you know, it's, it's got a lot of sort of survival elements built into it, I guess you can say. This is absolutely not Gears of War or Halo. It's much closer to, you know, Stalker, obviously, where it had its origins. Uh, but it really feels like they get the balance right in terms of making ammo 
ammo available, giving you different ways to kill enemies, uh, and just sort of rationing out the economy of items in a really intelligent way that keeps the tension exactly where it needs to be. And that's not an easy thing for a video game to do, but you know, so far it seems like they're doing it right. Now this footage that I'm showing you here wasn't my own, I wasn't allowed to record, no one was, it's B-roll footage that was provided to everyone, but I played this exact same section in the exact same way or very similar, and you're seeing here that I'm sort of making my approach towards this, you know, building off in the distance, and there's actually a sandstorm moving in while I'm doing that. And uh, you're seeing everything darken, you're seeing, you know, the dust storm come up, you can see the particle effects kicking up with the sand, and eventually when the, when the sandstorm's right on you, it's really dark, and you have to bring your flashlight out, uh, and that provides the illumination you need to be able to go inside into this building and explore it. Uh, the enemies that you're faced with, yeah, they're sort of zombie-esque dudes. One of the things I like about the Metro games is that if you shoot these sorts of, like, horde-like enemies in the head, they die. So they're not all bullet sponges. If you can land a single headshot, you will kill them in one hit. So it does reward accuracy, which is a component I really like. For the first time, the game now has drivable vehicles. Because the environments you're exploring are actually quite large, these vehicles are important. Here you've got a makeshift combi van, I guess, and with some really weird ass steering wheel, it looks like kind of like a crowbar, I guess, and you're able to drive it around wherever you please. It's not on rails. You can literally take it off-road and go wherever you like. It has very sort of floaty controls, but you know, it's, it, it works. It does a job. It's kind of cool. Now, at one point, I had to sort of storm a tower, and once I had taken it and got to the very top, I managed to find a sniper rifle at the top. And here is where I would sort of offer one of my main concerns about what I've seen so far, and that's enemy AI, which seems to be very, very, very dumb, to be honest. Um, if you played the previous Metro games, you know that you don't necessarily play them for... You know, the shooting aspects, I know that sounds kind of weird to say about a first person shooter, but it's so much about the atmosphere and the story and the setting and all that sort of shit. The shooting is sort of a bit incidental to all of that. I get the feeling it might be a little bit the same with Exodus because the performance of the enemy AI that I saw, they were really just meat sacks that stood there. You know, I, I, there was quite a few circumstances in the game where I was outnumbered like 15 to one, but the enemy just made no attempt whatsoever to advance on me. They would literally just wait there behind cover, not even firing at me most of the time, just waiting for me to shoot them in the head. So yeah, I mean, this is one example here. You can see it. Like I've got this perfect line of sight on them and they're all just kind of like standing there. And again, this isn't me playing, but I did this exact same section myself. And they're just standing there, not doing anything, just kind of like presenting themselves as targets, you know? So again, if you're looking for a really well-crafted first-person shooter mechanically, you know, look at something like Doom. But if you're looking for something deeply immersive with a story and world and open world exploration, all that sort of stuff, then that's what Metro Exodus seems to be for. But again, this is a preview only, so I don't want to pass judgment. I'm just saying that was my impression based upon this game and also what I played in previous Metro games. Weapon modding continues to be a really core part of the series. Uh, the level of custom customization you can bring to weapons completely changes them. First of all, it looks fucking sick. Just like, look at how this works. It's so cool. But more than that, you can actually mod weapons on the fly. You've got a backpack on your back where you can do it wherever you like. You can change them up based upon what you need. Uh, and as I said, just the range for each specific weapon is absolutely huge. You know, it just completely transforms them. Whatever you want to do, you can do. And I'm really looking forward to sort of just getting stuck into this and being play, able to play around with it because bringing the right tool to the job each time really matters. And yeah, it's, it seems to be doing really well in that regard. Now, the big difference between Metro Exodus and Last Light in 2033, the first two games, is that they were very uh, focused, singular, linear shooters, okay? Really sort of on rails. Metro Exodus is the first time the series goes open world. And I was very concerned that you'd really fuck with Metro's formula if you send it open world, because it's so much about those curated moments that if you just let people loose in a big map, how can it still be Metro? But I'm pleased to say from what I've seen that they've really nailed this component of it because you have to imagine there's this big map that you can explore and there are a number of optional objectives within that but there's also specific story focused mission areas that are very curated and that really feel like you know what you experienced in the first two metro games i, I think that the way they're balancing that is 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 just perfect so far. As I said, I've played three different areas now and they all have this quality where I can explore as much as I like, but when I get to a specific point, it feels like a metro level of old. Um, and just this one area where I went to with spiders and, you know, if you shine a light on them, they run away. And if you shine it for long enough, they die. So it's not always just about shooting enemies. It can also just be about like, you know, other ways to kill them. Uh, it was so creepy as well. I was actually going through this area and I was like so focused and so tense. And um, the, the, the Metro, the PR guy was sitting there next to me and he was watching me play. And then my phone was like under my leg as I was sitting on this chair. 
and my phone vibrated. And I literally jumped out of my chair and then this guy started laughing at me because I was like so in, I was so immersed in this. I was so like, scared, these fucking spiders everywhere. And uh, anyway, it was, it was a funny moment. Either way, uh, as I said, the balance between these open world areas and giving you the freedom to go wherever you please, while also retaining these very scripted, curated, sort of claustrophobic environments, it seems to be great at this point. So that's what I played. Um, look, you know, I loved, loved, loved the first two Metro games. I might do a video on them in the future before the release of Metro Exodus, which is out on the 15th of February, by the way. If you haven't played those two games, I really strongly recommend playing them before this launches because they have aged extremely well. They are just fantastic games and you can get a redux version of each of them that really lifts the visuals and some of the mechanics and they're in great place. But Metro Exodus is absolutely a game that I am so looking forward to. You know, it comes out uh, on the 15th. I will absolutely be playing it on day one. I'll have a review for you guys as well. In fact, I'll be playing it before then. I've already spoken to the publisher and I will be getting an early copy for a review for you. Um, the previous games were great. This one's looking great as well. Um, enjoy the footage. Check out some more stuff online as well because there's some other footage available from other people and the like. Um, and I will see you guys next time. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like it and subscribe and hit the notification bell. And if you really liked it, consider supporting me on Patreon. Bye-bye.